political spectrum. We are watching something unfold across our country uh, that's very rare and it is, it is uniquely American. We're watching Americans do what Americans have always done in a crisis. Whenever we sense our country's in danger, we rise to the occasion. We become actively involved. set things right. The, the debates inside the Capitol building are merely a reflection of a much larger debate that's going on all across the country right now. It's going on over backyard fences and family dinner tables, on talk shows and in town hall forums like this one, all across America from one Thank coast to the other. I heard a, a politician the other day uh, call this uh, un-American. I, I saw another call it evil. I don't think you could, you, could, you could possibly state the opposite more precisely. It's not un-American, it is uniquely American. one of the best things about our country, that we have the freedom all to come together as citizens, freely to debate the issues, and to hold our elected officials accountable. Well, I know you all have a lot to say. We've got another group forming out there, so we're going to try to keep this to about an hour, hour, 15 minutes, and then cycle in the other groups so that they also have a chance to make their views known. Um, I'm going to take about five minutes, if, if you don't mind, and then, then the rest of the, uh, the, the, the time is yours. But I do want to talk a little bit about, first, the enormous amount of deficit spending that's going on, uh, and then uh, get to health care. This, uh, this chart here that tells the story better than words. This is the deficit or surplus of the United States government as a percentage of our gross domestic product from 1970 until uh, this year. Uh, as you can see, we've been running pretty bad deficits all of these years. We had one shining moment, and that was the Clinton administration. <laughs> deficit spending that George Bush did. The last year in office broke all the records, brought it to about two and a half percent of the entire gross domestic product of the country. Here's what's happened in the last year. That's this red bar. This was the de Bush deficit, more than two and a half percent of GDP. This is the deficit that we are running this year. And you see that? all the debt that this country has accumulated from the very first day of the war, George Washington administration until the very last day of the George W. Bush administration is going to double in the next five years and nearly triple in the next ten years under the budget that the president has already signed into law. We'll put it yet another way. There's a concept called National Debt Day. National Debt Day is that day in the fiscal year that ends September the 30th when the federal government runs out of money. And everything the federal government spends from that day until September 30th is borrowed. Last year under Bush, National Debt Day occurred on August the 5th. And everything from August the 5th until September the 30th, we didn't have. We borrowed it, we put it on our kids' tab. This year, National Debt Day occurred on April the 26th.
Just last week, the debt projections increased by two trillion dollars. Now, every trillion dollars we talk about is about thirteen thousand dollars from every family in America. We all know that if you live beyond your means today, you're going to have to live below your means in the future. And I'm deeply concerned with the damage that our government is doing to our economic future by these policies. Policies have not stimulated current, the current economy. You just saw the news today. The stimulus bill was supposed to cap unemployment at 8%. Uh, unemployment is now 9.7%. It is the, it is the, uh, the, the lowest unemployment rate in the nation since, since 1983. And I'm deeply concerned that these fiscal policies are robbing us of our future economic growth. Now, I know that you, most of you come here today to talk about health care. And I'd like to begin by spending just about three more minutes just to laying out my views on the subject. I believe there are very serious problems with our health care system that must be addressed. But, But I also have to tell you, I'm skeptical that a government that pays $400 for a hammer, $600 for a toilet seat, and runs a $1.6 trillion deficit in a single year is somehow going to be successful at keeping our health care costs. is going to bring efficiency to our doctor's offices. And I'm skeptical that the same government that runs the IRS is going to bring compassion and understanding to our insurance company. Now we've got a lot of experience with government law systems. They're remarkably consistent, whether they're in Britain or Canada or Tennessee or Massachusetts or Maine. They consistently produce massive cost overruns followed by the brutal rationing of care. We all know that long lines and waiting lists are a hallmark of bureaucracy. But a six-month waiting list for heart surgery can be downright deadly. And, and I believe there's a much better alternative. And, and that's a prepaid... Folks, I have folks. And I do want to ask all sides, let's respect each other. Uh, it's a very important subject. It, it affects every one of our lives in the most personal possible way. And we ought to have respect for one another's opinions. Most of all, I want to be sure that everybody leaves this room tonight with the same number of fingers that they've <laughs>